Now that we've seen the mechanism for an SN1 reaction, let's take a look at how the mechanism affects the stereochemistry. So I start with an alkyl halide, and notice that this carbon in my alkyl halide is sp3 hybridized. So in the first step of the mechanism, right, the electrons in here kick off onto my leaving group which is my halogen. So the halogen picks up a lone pair of electrons. So if I draw that halogen over here, right, it gets an extra lone pair of electrons, which give it a negative one formal charge, like that. I'm taking a bond away from my carbon atom. So my carbon atom now only has three bonds. So it's gonna change from an sp3 hybridized carbon on the left to an sp2 hybridized carbon on the right. So let me go ahead and draw in my, my three bonds here for my sp2 hybridized carbon. Remember, sp2 hybridized carbons exhibit trigonal planar geometry around them, right? So all of these bonds are in the same plane, like a flat sheet of paper. So an sp2 hybridized carbon has an unhybridized p orbital. So I can go ahead and put in my p orbital in here like that. It has a positive one formal charge. Charge, right, which makes an electrophile, right, it's positively charged, so it wants negatively charged electrons. So in the next step of the mechanism, your nucleophile comes along. Right? So your nucleophile is right here, lone pair of electrons, will give it a negative one formal charge. The negatively charged nucleophile is attracted to the positively charged electrophile, the carbocation. And the nucleophile has two places that it can attack. Right? This lone pair of electrons can attack from above the flat plane, or from below the flat plane. So you might think to yourself, we've seen this before, right? I would get a, um, I would get a mixture of products, 50% attack from the top, 50% att attack from below. And normally you would expect that, but this leaving group right here, this, this halogen, this negatively charged halogen, is going to uh, shield this face of the carbocation a little bit. The positive and negative charges are going to attract and form what are called an ion pair. So the nucleophile isn't as likely to attack from the bottom. Um, but it can, it can. So you're going to get more of an attack from, from the top, um, some attack from below, and so you are going to get a mixture of products, but not quite a 50-50% mixture. So let's go ahead and draw the results of a nucleophilic attack on our electrophile, right? If the nucleophile attacks from the top, right? The nucleophile is going to form a bond with that carbon from the top there. And once again, this changes the carbon back into an sp3 hybridized carbon. All right, if the nucleophile if the nucleophile attacks from below, right? We can we can show we can show our carbon here and our nucleophile adding from below like that. And that's going to push these bonds up back again into an sp three hybridized carbon. So this is why you have to worry about stereochemistry, right? You end up with an sp3 hybridized carbon. And let's check out our products here and see how they compare with our original uh, alkyl halide reactant, right? So, so this, uh, this nucleophile on the right added, right, in the same place where that halogen used to be. So that's retention of the absolute configuration. So whatever it is at that, at, at that carbon, right, it stays the same. If it's R, it's R. If it's S, then it would stay S. Now, for the example on the left, right, we can see the nucleophile added above, right? So that's actually going to give you inversion of configuration at your chirality center. So you're going to see a slightly greater than 50% uh, formation of this product, the inversion product. So let me go ahead and write that. Right, this is the inversion of the configuration. And then you're going to get slightly less than 50% of the retention of the absolute configuration, right? So this is retention of absolute configuration, and this is inversion. Let's take a look at an example and see how we think about stereochemistry when we're doing SN1 reactions. So let's take a look at an an alkyl halide over here. So I'll go ahead and put my cyclohexane ring, and I'll put two methyl groups here, and throw in some stereochemistry. So I'll put a bromine right here, and then on that same carbon, I'll put a methyl group going away from us. So this is our alkyl halide, and we're going to react our alkyl halide with Na plus SH minus. So, the first step is to identify your leaving group, right, which is going to be your halogen, your bromine. Then you think about, okay, what's the nucleophile? And that would, of course, be the negatively charged anion here, which is your hydrogen sulfide anion right here, the SH minus. So that is going to be the nucleophile, and bromine is going to be your leaving group. So think about the mechanism first. Right, you're going to get these electrons in here are going to kick off onto your bromine. So let's go ahead and draw this 
carbocation, this resulting carbocation here, right? So these two methyl groups are right here. And we now have a methyl group like that with a positive one charge on this carbon, a carbocation. Notice what happened to this carbon, right? Let me go ahead and, and identify it, right? Over here, where we had an sp3 hybridized carbon, and over here, we actually moved to an sp2 hybridized carbon, which is why I drew the methyl group with a straight line. I drew the methyl group with a straight line indicating that it is in the plane of the page, right? Because it's transitioning to an sp2 hybridized situation. Now is where we get our nucleophilic attack, right? So our SH minus, our anion, is going to attack our carbocation, right? And it could attack from either side of that ring, right? So let's go ahead and, and draw the products, right? So thinking about adding on an SH to our molecule, and let's think about the two products that would result. So I go ahead and draw my, my ring here, and I think about that, that nucleophile adding on uh, coming towards me, right? So let's say it attacked from above our ring, so I put our SH right here, and then that would push this methyl group going away from us, right? So it goes back to an sp3 hybridized carbon, and now the methyl group is going away from us like that. The other possible product, right? So the hydrogen sulfide anion did not have to attack from above the ring. It could have attacked from below the ring. And if it attacked from below the ring, right, it would have added on going away from us. And when it formed a bond with this carbon, it would have pushed this methyl group up. So the methyl group would go up in the second case right here. So those are our two products. And if we look at our original molecule here, right? We can see that the bromine was originally coming out at us in space like that. So here we have our SH adding on um, coming out at us, right? So that's that's the retention of the of the absolute configuration. Whereas in the second product over here, right, the SH is going away from me in space, so that's the inversion product. So remember, it's a slight preference for the inversion product due to the fact that the bromide anion would form an ion pair with your carbocation. So always think about stereochemistry in an SN1 reaction. It, when you get your product, take a look at chirality centers and uh, uh, if you if you have a chirality center, think about think about what products you would be um, using stereochemistry.